This is Daily Armenia, Civil Net's Daily News Digest. Here are today's top stories from Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh, and the region. The European Union, Russia, and the United States have all welcomed yesterday's delivery of desperately needed humanitarian aid to Nagorno-Karabakh by the Russian Red Cross Society, with Brussels, Moscow, and Washington each calling on Azerbaijan to partially reopen the Lachin Corridor. In a statement, a spokesperson for European Council President Charles Michel said, The opening of the Agdam route is an important step that should facilitate the reopening also of the Lachin Corridor. It is our expectation that it will create momentum for the resumption of regular humanitarian deliveries. Meanwhile, Maria Zaharova, the spokesperson for Russia's foreign ministry, said, We expect that in the near future, in parallel with the Ogdam route, the Lachin Corridor will also be unblocked, and then humanitarian aid will enter the region unhindered in both directions on a regular basis. For her part, Yuri Kim, a senior U.S. State Department official involved in ongoing negotiations between Armenia and Azerbaijan, wrote on X, formerly Twitter, Now it's time to open, immediately and simultaneously, both Lachin and Ogdam routes for the Red Cross to end the suffering in Nagorno-Karabakh. The Lachin Corridor refers to the sole overland route connecting Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia. Under the 2020 ceasefire declaration, Russian peacekeepers are supposed to control the route, but Azerbaijan has blocked nearly all traffic from using the corridor for more than nine months. The Agdam route refers to a long shuttered road connecting the Nagorno-Karabakh town of Oskaran and Agdam, a ruined town Yerevan ceded to Baku after the 2020 war. Yesterday's aid delivery was made along that route, the first time it has been used in decades. Over the weekend, Moscow proposed to deliver aid to Stepanakert via Agdam, with the understanding Baku would then partially reopen the Lachin Corridor to allow further supplies of humanitarian aid to Nagorno-Karabakh by the International Committee of the Red Cross and Russian peacekeepers. A single Russian aid truck reached Nagorno-Karabakh yesterday after an unexplained delay while transiting through Azerbaijan, marking the first delivery of humanitarian supplies to Nagorno-Karabakh in nearly three months. However, as of this afternoon, the Lachin Corridor remains closed. Azerbaijan's near-total blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh entered its ninth month yesterday and has pushed Nagorno-Karabakh's roughly 120,000 Armenians to the brink of famine. Since the 2020 war, the European Union and United States have together supported one track of Armenia-Azerbaijan peace talks, while Russia coordinates a separate track. Neither has made any discernible progress toward a deal. Yesterday, Armenia's defense ministry reported one soldier was found dead by a gunshot wound to the head. An investigation is underway to determine the circumstances of the incident, the ministry said in a short statement. No other details were made immediately available. Today, Armenia's investigative committee said preliminary information suggested the soldier, who was stationed in the northeastern section of the Armenia-Azerbaijan border, died by suicide. Since the beginning of the year, Armenia has reported more than 60 army deaths according to a tally kept by Radio Azatutun. Of those, only about a dozen took place during combat, despite regular reports of ceasefire violations along the border. It is understood that bullying, harassment, and hazing remain commonplace in Armenia's armed forces. Military service is mandatory for all adult male citizens. In other defense news, the Artsakh Defense Army today reported one soldier sustained non-life-threatening injuries after Azerbaijani troops opened fire near the village of Norshen in southeastern Nagorno-Karabakh. Earlier, the army reported another ceasefire violation by Azerbaijan near the village of Chankatakh in northeastern Nagorno-Karabakh. There were no casualties reported there. This all comes amid escalating tensions in the region and growing fears of a new war. Videos continue to spread on social media appearing to show Azerbaijan moving large numbers of troops and military equipment. CivilNet has not been able to independently verify or geolocate the footage. Meanwhile, open source flight trackers are showing a surge in cargo flights to Azerbaijan from Israel and Turkey, two of the country's main arms suppliers. Back in Yerevan, thousands of people gathered yesterday evening in Tumo Park to watch the beloved Armenian opera Anush. The performance was part of the city's first-ever open-air opera event, which is set to run through the end of the week. If you're in Yerevan and interested in attending, the performances are free for the public. And finally, the civil net number of the day is 3,158. That's the total number of performances put on by theaters across Armenia last year, according to the country's state-run statistical committee. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground in Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh, and the region.